A well-managed woodland can promote wildlife diversity and forest health. Woodland owners have several tools available to them to achieve these objectives on their properties. Two of the more common techniques that we use are single tree selection and patch cut harvesting. Used together over the long term, these are often termed uneven age forest management because what they do is create trees of multiple generations or basically different age trees within the same woodland. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about what these two techniques are, what trees they help grow, and how wildlife species respond to them. With single tree selection, we're doing just that. We're removing single trees throughout the forest, and what that does, it creates more growing space for the surrounding canopy trees. This often results in increased vigor and health of those trees. So basically, when we remove a tree like this, we're creating a small canopy gap. And what happens is we'll get a temporary growth of, of young trees and other, other plants within that gap. And these conditions used over time really favors a certain sweet species. And so uh, more shade tolerant tree species like American beech or sugar maple are really favored using single tree selection. So with single tree selection, you have to decide which trees you're going to remove. It's really not always the biggest trees that are removed. There's a number of factors that go into that, just like any other management technique. So it's really based on what your management objectives are, uh, what the current stand conditions are, uh, the site conditions, uh, as well as tree biology. So a lot of woodland owners will seek the assistance of a professional forester who can take the guesswork out of this. And so they'll decide which trees to remove that results in the best condition for your woodland. So with single tree selection, there's advantages and disadvantages. Since we're removing very little of the tree canopy, there's actually very low visual impact with single tree selection. In fact, you can walk in a lot of woodlands that have had that done and not even realize that there was a harvest done recently. Another advantage with single tree selection is you get to decide which trees stay and which trees go. And that can have a lot of benefits, not only from a timber standpoint, but really from a wildlife management standpoint. There's also species of wildlife that are adapted to the structure that you create by using single tree selection. So a good example of that is the cerulean warbler. It's a state endangered species. It's a little songbird that nests really high up in the canopy. Uh, but what research has found is that they really prefer to nest in oak trees, and especially white oak trees, that are adjacent to small canopy gaps. So while single tree selection has a lower visual impact than other methods, because you're removing trees from a larger area, you have to move logging equipment over that area. And so you can actually have a greater impact in terms of soil disturbance and road creation than you would with regeneration openings and patch cuts where you're removing uh, more timber in a more uh, confined area. Another tool woodland owners have available to them is a patch cut. And with a patch cut, what essentially we're doing is removing all the overstory trees in an area the size of about a half acre up to about three acres in size. And with this technique, we're basically mimicking a natural disturbance event. So what this allows, it allows our shade intolerant species like some of our oak species, cherry, and tulip to have a better chance of growing and competing with other trees. And so when you remove all those overstory trees, you have a lot of sunlight. And for the first few years, you have a lot of trees growing in that area at a density exceeding sometimes thousands of trees per acre. But over time, those trees tend to die out and they sell thin. Uh, but a good general rule of thumb when you're doing patch cuts is the, the diameter of the cut needs to be at least one to two times the height of the surrounding canopy. And what this allows is you have a large enough core area in the center of that cut to get full sunlight for the majority of the, the time. Uh, in the surrounding perimeter of that cut, even though you don't have any overstory trees above it, you still get enough shade where it actually promotes the more shade tolerant species like your beech and your maple. In terms of deciding between uh, patch cuts and single tree and other methods, uh, it's all the same in terms of the factors you, you consider. So it comes down to your management objectives, uh, species biology, uh, the site conditions, and those will really dictate what you're going to do and where. So when you create a patch cut, you actually create a good wildlife habitat. And so that dense growth of young trees and shrubs and wildflowers that you get has positive effects on different wildlife species. And really over the first 15 to 20 years, 
these patch cuts change a lot in terms of vegetation structure and composition and you'll get different wildlife species responding to those over time. But certainly a typical patch cut, you'll have white-tailed deer uh, using these areas for food because they feed on the stems of the twigs of young trees. Uh, you'll have eastern cottontail rabbit, uh, wild turkey utilizing them for food and cover. And you even have forest bats that'll come, sometimes travel quite a distance away to feed in these patch cuts for insects. Normally we associate uh, some species as having mature forest habitat and young forest habitat, but a lot of species require both. And so even some of our mature forest breeding songbirds like a scarlet tanager and ovenbird, once they're young fledge the nest, they'll often take them to areas like patch cuts and regeneration openings uh, to feed. Most people would call a two to three acre patch cut really big, but there's actually species of wildlife that need even bigger areas. Uh, so some of our birds, for example, yellow-breasted chat, which is a songbird, uh, rough grouse, uh, these species that are of conservation concern actually need bigger areas. And so in this case, we would prescribe a regeneration opening, which would create areas of even 10 acres or larger that some of these species need. Our sun-loving tree species regenerate naturally within these patch cuts, but we can't always predict which ones are going to come up. So in cases where landowners think that uh, desired species like oaks and black walnuts are unlikely to regenerate naturally, sometimes they'll choose to do supplemental plantings within these patch cuts. In terms of the different timber harvesting techniques, there's no one approach. One technique is not better than the other. They simply result in different conditions and you're going to have different plant and animal species respond to those conditions. Ideally, you'd want to use a variety of these techniques to enhance wildlife diversity and tree species diversity on your property. Um, larger woodland owners, you're going to have more flexibility in terms of what you can do, but timber harvesting can still be an important forest management technique for smaller woodlots. Always seek the advice of a professional forester who can help you determine which harvest technique is right for you. To find a forester or other resources, see the web links in the video description below.